welcome to worship this July 26th at First Presbyterian Church. We feature this morning uh, our window with Moses receiving the Ten Commandments from God. As a part of your spiritual preparation, you can click the link below for a centering exercise. Uh, you can do that now, or you may want to wait another time. But during our worship today, we will be online, of course, and in following much of the story of Moses and the people in the interaction with God to receive the Ten Commandments. Friends, we welcome you to this worship service. Together, we are worshiping God. Testament letter to the Hebrews, chapter 11. By faith, Moses left Egypt, not fearing the anger of the empire king, whom Moses could see, but pressing on and trusting the eternal king he could not see. Would you please join us in singing hymn number two, Come, Thou Almighty King. While we may often, O oh God, think we know the effective solutions to problems in our lives, our true help is in you alone. Receive our praise for your relentless love claiming us, seeking us, and making us new. As we confess before you our wanderings and sin, hear our prayers in these moments of silence. O oh, most loving, passionate, and compassionate one, we acknowledge before you our pursuing of interest and inclinations, which we think will fulfill and satisfy in one way or another. We disregard or forget how you are, ever yearning for us and encouraging our turning again to you. 
O giver of mercy, although we have failed you, failed ourselves and failed others, journey with us from your love, for the sharing of life in your love, so that day by day we faithfully serve you among all your people in the way and spirit of Jesus Christ. Friends, let us hear and share with gladness the good and blessed news of the gospel, that in Jesus Christ we are made new. Thanks be to God. Let us now hear the word of God from selected verses of Exodus, chapters 19, 20, 24, 32, and 34. Then Moses went up to God. The Lord called to him from the mountain, saying, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob and tell the Israelites, You have seen what I did to the Egyptians and how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you unto myself. When the Lord descended upon Mount Sinai to the top of the mountain, the Lord summoned Moses to the top of the mountain, and Moses went up. Then God spoke again these words, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, you shall have no other gods before me. Moses came and told the people all the words of the Lord and all of the ordinances. And all the people answered with one voice and said, All the words that the Lord has spoken, we will do. And Moses wrote down all the words of the Lord. He rose up early in the morning and built an altar at the foot of the mountain and set up twelve pillars corresponding to the twelve tribes of Israel. The Lord said to Moses, Come up to me on the mountain and wait there, and I will give you the tablets of stone with the law and the commandment, which I have written for their instruction. Then Moses turned and went down from the mountain, carrying the two tablets of the covenant in his hands, tablets that were written on both sides, written on the front and on the back, the tablets were the work of God, and the writing was the writing of God engraved upon the tablets. As soon as he came near to the camp and saw the people's out-of-control behavior, Moses' anger burned hot, and he threw the tablets from his hands and broke them at the foot of the mountain. The Lord said to Moses, Cut two tablets of stone like the former ones, and I will write on the tablets the words that were on the former tablets, which you broke. Be ready in the morning, and come up in the morning to Mount Sinai, and present yourself there to me on the top of the mountain. So Moses cut two tablets of stone like the former ones. He rose early in the morning and went up to Mount Sinai, as the Lord had commanded him, and took in his hand the two tablets of stone. The Lord descended in the cloud and stood with him there and proclaimed the name the Lord. Now Moses quickly bowed his head toward the earth and worshiped. He said, If now I have found favor in your sight, O Lord, I pray, go with us. Although this is a stiff-necked people, pardon our iniquity and our sin and take us for your inheritance. The Lord said, I hereby make a covenant. Before all your people I will perform marvels, such as have not been performed in all the earth or in any nation. And all the people among whom you live shall see the work of the Lord, for it is an awesome thing that I will do with you. 
Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. There was majesty at the summit. There was brokenness at the base camp. And the journey continues of God's people influenced by God's spirit. At this moment, however, we don't want to get ahead of ourselves. When I met the Smith Glass Company's Ten Commandments window in 2007, I was 54 years old. And for 13 years, I have noticed it at least weekly, but neither learned much from it, nor had my life influenced by it. More recently, however, that has changed. Since uh, David Kipp several months ago and Emily Began more recently suggested that a series of worship services from the scriptural background of these 11 windows, since they suggested that, the Moses and Ten Commandments window has been both teaching me and influencing my life. Since 2007, I've thought this window portrayed Moses' first time journey up the mountain in relation to the Ten Commandments. Yet while preparing for our worship service today, I no longer hold that opinion. Exodus indicates that Moses actually ascended the mountain three times related to the Ten Commandments. The first time God communicated to him the Ten as by dictation. And we see that uh, as we've read this morning from chapters 19 and 20. At that point, Moses returned to base camp down below. He told the people, and then he wrote down the dictation which he remembered, uh, maybe upon papyrus or the equivalent of today's bonded paper, something like that. Moses then also built 12 pillars to represent the 12 ancestral tribes or communities of Israel. That's in chapter 24 of Exodus. And, and it's pictured, those uh, 12 pillars are pictured in the faceted glass window. Then God called Moses to the mountain's summit for a second time to give him a gift of the Ten Commandments inscribed or chiseled into two stone tablets by God, uh, provided to him from God. And, and that's in chapters 24 and 32. After experiencing the majesty of God reaching out at the summit of the mountains, not once, but now twice, when Moses descended to the people's base camp this second time, he discovered what the story indicates was out-of-control behavior by the people. And so in a fit of uncontrolled rage, Moses threw God's gift to the ground, breaking the stone tablets and their divine chiseled words. After Moses regains his calm, God calls him back up the mountain a third time, but this time God tells him in advance, you bring the two tablets of stone yourself as the replacements. I'll chisel them again, but you bring your own tablets. And that's in chapter 34. And so Moses did. And so God did. And so the Smith Glass Company's fourth window from 1966 here pictures not Moses' first or second trip to the summit of the mountain, but either his second or third trip to the summit of the mountain. The extended story from Exodus reminds us how God is relentless for freedom against Pharaoh or any empire. So that neither Pharaoh nor any empire can have the last word over the slavery of a people. 
we also are reminded how God is relentless in relation to a people who are determined to live without discipline and who are determined to live with careless abandon simply because they are too undisciplined to cultivate within themselves helpful measures of patience and steadfastness. From the summit, majestic God is relentless. Even at work among the people in their base camp and on their journey beyond the base camp and away from that mountain, miles away from that mountain, God is relentlessly present with them and for them. Although it is an uneasy relationship much of the time. Surely it was uneasy. Have you ever had a disagreement or two or three so severe with someone close to you that either that person or you or both of you went a long time without speaking or you went a long time without mentioning the subject that was so sensitive? Don't you wonder if it wasn't that way between God and Moses some of the time? and between Moses and the people, and between God and those people during those times. And that it would be like that down the road in days to come. As the story goes, though, even when they, as my mother would say, uh, even when they are so put out with each other and not speaking to one another, God goes with that stiff-necked people for the sake of the seeming fool's errand that God has committed to undertake with this covenant. A covenant, as you know, is a deal that is pledged. It is a promise that is made to stay accountable, to stay faithful, to stay in relationship through thick and thin, through the people's thick-headedness. Oh, there's plenty of the people's thick-headedness for God to deal with. And there's plenty of the people's thin will, thin courage, and thin perseverance for God to deal with as well. As the story goes, though, God, who is a primary character when Moses experiences majesty on the mountain, God, who is a primary character when there is out-of-control behavior at the base camp due to people being impulsive and impatient and indulgent, God, best we understand, is certainly pushed to where God also experiences some thin and maybe a lot of thin patience. Some of you have heard me say uh, sort of tongue-in-cheek, all the world's people, if they knew me, should be glad that I'm not God because I'd have given up on the world a long time ago. The good news for the world is that I am not God and that God does not give up on the world ever through our thick-headedness or our thin will or our thin courage or on our thin perseverance. God does not give up on the world or on you or on me or on anyone, but instead, even beyond that summit, Even beyond the base camp, God continues the journey with people way back then and still today. A few weeks ago, two Presbyterian elders with whom I served in Tulsa from 1994 until 2007, and they suggested a book to me uh, via our email conversations because the book had created an important stirring of their 
understanding of God and their perception of God and their experience of God along the journey in life uh, recently since they, since they read the book as God is experienced through Judaism. It is enough for you to know that uh, these two elders, they both have eyes that can dance with laughter. They both have experienced multiple challenges and heartbreak through the years. And they both have been led here and there down paths in their life and faith journeys which they did not plan and quite possibly which they would not have ordered on Amazon to be delivered to them if that were even possible. One of the two is, by nature, long on patience and kindness. When all of her other qualities are washed away, empathy will still remain. The other is, by nature, long on curmudgeonliness. Now, she's also long on kindness, but... She takes no guff from anyone unless they can demonstrate that there is credibility in their feedback or pushback to her. One still lives in Oklahoma. The other now lives in New Mexico. I guess they stay in contact because each mentioned how the two of them have discussed uh, this book and how they have each found illuminating Sarah Hurwitz's 2019 faith memoir. Now this title is long. Here it goes. Here all along, finding meaning, spirituality, and a deeper connection to life in Judaism after finally choosing to look there. Miss Hurwitz is today not yet 40 years old. She is a graduate of both Harvard University and Harvard Law School. She was raised by her parents as mostly a uh, holiday-only celebrant of the Jewish religious tradition. As an adult, though, her life and faith journey veered to where, uh, as her memoir indicates, she discovered a vitality in Judaism which she had earlier missed and overlooked. While engaged in her studies, she became aware of a story from the Talmud, which is, uh, the Talmud is a collection of interpretations complementary to the Hebrew scriptures. And in that Talmudic story, after Moses shatters the first set of stone tablets that God carved, uh, the people at the base camp who realized their out-of-control behavior after the tablets are shattered and they see the look in Moses' eyes, they rush to gather up the pieces. And when Moses comes back from his third meeting with God, bearing the replacement stone tablets, the broken fragments, according to this story, the broken fragments of the first set, were kept for posterity in the Ark of the Covenant with the replacement tablets. Thus, they are carried on the subsequent journey of the people, by the people, as a reminder of their brokenness. Jesus was Jewish. He took the teachings of God through Moses and summarized them into two commandments. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength and your neighbor as yourself, he said, quoting from Deuteronomy chapter 6 and Leviticus chapter 19. You find that in Mark chapter 12. And Jesus teaching and living that summarizing of the ten Jesus experienced brokenness on the cross. As curmudgeonly as I can be, I do not doubt that Sarah Hurwitz has discovered how in the mystery of God's faithfulness 
we grow to sense about self and to sense in life that God has communicated the strongest of covenants with God's people. This fourth window and its sister ten windows remind us how it is part of God's wisdom for our journey that we become wise about the brokenness in our lives because that brokenness is always with us as, thank God, God is with us as well, calling us every day and in every chapter of history, calling us to practice both faithfulness and discovery and to remember daily if we cannot remember ten, to remember daily the two that Jesus summarized. So on the journey where faithfulness and discovery are valued, love from God for all of God's people will grow. The majesty on the summit is important. But our lives, shaped by God's being relentlessly and tenaciously faithful among us at the base camp where our brokenness is all so evident. And our lives being shaped by God's being relentlessly and tenaciously faithful all along the road and roads beyond. How huge and crucial that is. All honor and praise be to God. Today our prayers of thanksgiving and intercession are guided by the words of the song, God the Sculptor of the Mountains. I will offer a sentence of direction for our prayers which will be followed by silence. Then David and Michelle will lead us into the song, one stanza at a time. Let us consider and offer praise to God for innumerable gifts in life. God, the sculptor of the mountain, Consider and offer our thanks for God's transforming grace. God, the nuisance of the Pharaoh. Let us consider and offer our lives with gratitude as God journeys among us for newness of life. God, the dresser of the veil.
Let us consider our lives ever blessed by God's love, which continually works for healing and for a just and equitable peace. God, the unexpected infant, God, the calm, determined youth, God, the table turning prophet, God, the resurrected truth, you are present every moment, we are searching me. As we trust you to meet us again, O steadfast one, hear us praying with the words that Jesus taught us, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Do you join us in singing, We Are Marching in the Light of God. As we journey and travel throughout this life, may we know that God always journeys with us, step by step, together. And may we do so in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.